American football in Finland. The voice in your ears right now is Perfect Purvis, and this is American football in Finland. First time listeners, welcome to the show. I hope you guys enjoy brutally honest football analysis and opinions, because I'm all out of bullshit. Returning followers and AFF faithful, you know what it is, TIF. Today we're going to do a special Maple Bowl edition. I've got with me two guest hosts to kind of talk about the Maple League teams. First, we have Finland's national team head coach, Tuomas Hekkinen. Tuomas, welcome to the AFF podcast. Thank you. Good to be on again. Also joining today, we have head coach of the Sinioki Crocodiles, Michael Mattingly. Coach Mike, welcome to the show. Purvis, thank you very much. Glad to be back. I don't think I've ever called you Mike, but that's going to work for today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All I want to do is I want to talk about these two teams. We got the Helsinki Roosters going against the Quopio Steelers. And I'm just going to open up the floor right now and just ask a couple of thoughts about what do you think about these two teams and the seasons that they've had. We'll start with the Helsinki Roosters and just say some things about the season they've had and how they look going into this game. Okay, so I think the Roosters of uh, 2018 are probably I, – I, was, I, would, I would go to the uh, extent saying that they are the best team in Finland that there's been since, you know, late 90s. Wow. And, uh, and, uh, and with that said, it's like, you know, uh, they've had a, a great season and, and it seems to me that uh, they really haven't been challenged in the Maple League. Uh, up until now, maybe next Saturday, but uh, you know, right now they've been cruising the whole year, and uh, and uh, I don't I don't see anyone stopping them. The strongest defense in the league, the best quarterback in the league, uh, they 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 out prepare everyone, they outplay everyone right now. So so uh, the, so they are the champions for a reason, and and you know, I quite honestly I think it's going to stay that way. What about you, Michael? What are you what are your thoughts on this team, since knowing that you've played them twice this year? Yeah, well, you know, we, they didn't leave a good taste in our mouth twice, but uh, I agree with Tuomas. I think, you know, they're one of the best teams I've ever seen from what I've heard and been told. Uh, you know, they they their offense is great, defense is great. Brandon's just a one-man machine out there. Uh, you know, they're just top to bottom coaching, all the players, guys on the bench, they just do everything the right way, and they're one of the best teams in Europe. And, you know, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't – you know, take home another Maple League championship once again. I agree with both of you guys. I definitely think this team is special. It, it's hard to really compare to them to past teams, and we can really only talk about this year. But the way that they have went through this season, systematically just being dominant in every facet of the game, both offense, defense, special teams, even their demeanor and how they handle situations, they're at a, like a professional level in this league, which is – Definitely not that professional this year. Uh, I won't say overall, but this year there's been a, a small drop in the professionalism of the teams and players, but the Roosters have not had that. And it's kind of like they're in a league of their own. So we'll talk about the Steelers next, and this team is a little bit different. Obviously, this is their first season in the Maple League, and they're in the Maple Bowl already. They won Division One last year. They brought back a similar team, added a few imports, and it's worked for them. Nothing taken away from the Steelers, you know. Even though I said that the Roosters are are what they are, but the Steelers have had a great season. It's it's a it's a it's been a joy to watch a new team in a league that looks looks healthy in every way, and they they've done a lot of right things. They uh, brought in the same key players, especially uh, with uh, quarterback Peters. He's been staying there the whole year, as we all know, and uh, and uh, it shows on the field. It's like you know they don't look like a first year team. They've been uh, they've been consistent. They've been they've been playing pretty good throughout the whole season. They've only had a couple of games where they kind of stalled a little bit, but uh, but uh, you know it's like they got an identity. When you see them a couple of times, you know what they're doing, and I think that's always a good sign. I'm probably talking about more about their offense than I'm talking about their defense because that's mm-hmm. that's where they're you know. That's where their weakness is, and that's where they are not at the championship level yet. But uh, but their offense is good enough, you know. Like uh, like uh, wasn't for the Roosters, but their offense is good enough to go all the way, you know, in the Maple League. And that's a lot said for a first year team. Yeah, I mean, you know, they've been a very 
they've been a very solid team up and down. As Tomo said, their defense hasn't been to that championship standard yet, you could say. While they do have some good individual players, um, Yanni Lindquist, both uh, all three imports, as in Bell, Hayden, and Wart in the backfield. I mean, they do look like a really good team. And being their first year in the league, it's very impressive to see. And that offense is a hard thing. It's a hard thing to stop. They've got, you know, they've always been spread, but now towards the back half, they're even adding a little more up tempo to the repertoire, and it's it, they're becoming a force to reckon with. And and it's been a good thing to watch them, you know, go nine and two in the first year in the league, and really, you know, have success all the way around. So let's talk a, a little bit about the the matchups in this game. And the first matchup I want to talk about, probably the most important matchup, is. How can the Quopio Steelers slow down or stop the Roosters' offense? Obviously, for the Steelers, the defense is their weakness, but they haven't seemed too eager to change anything. Obviously, they got a new defensive coordinator in the middle of the season, but since they've changed, they've kept the same defensive set, pretty much the same personnel. They've had a lot of injuries, but they have to figure something out against the Roosters what are some things that you think they might be able to do to slow down the Roosters? Well, if if I was them in a perfect I, world, we in, a, in a perfect, perfect world, world. <laughs> in, a, in a perfect world, I would I would just blitz like crazy against them. Just you know, take away you know, like uh, make make them, make them like one dimensional, one way or the other. It's like you know, fill every gap, set go after go after the quarterback match up. They got they got good coverage guys. The Steelers have a few. Santre Inkine is a good corner. They could use their imports on the other receivers. And then, you know, like try to make the Roosters one-dimensional, one way or the other. Take away some of the time from the quarterback, you know, stuff their run, and, you know, make them go quick pass, make them go screens, that kind of thing, you know. If, if you're going to try to bend and break, bend and not break against the Roosters, you're going to break. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, I they got nothing to lose. So, you know, like if I was, if I, if I was at D.C., I would have tried to look at their offense, like, you know, what their key reads are and where, where, where Connect wants to look first. And then I would go after it. But, but you know, but it's easy to say from the outside. But that's what I would do, you know. Like I said, like I told you, I would try to die with my boots on, you know, if nothing else. <laughs> well, I like to almost the point of blitzing everybody. Like, you really do have nothing to lose. I think that's the start. But with them having four really good defensive backs in Inkinen, Bell, Hayden, and Wart. I mean, you your best chance is just to play man to man and just bring the house. Exactly. <laughs> lock everybody, lock everybody up. Just press the guy receivers at the line of scrimmage. You have four, you know, you really as you know, the new word in football, you know, is dudes. You got four dudes on defense that can go against all these really good receivers that the roosters have. And I would just press man and get after them and just hope for the best. Yeah, you're going to get beat a couple times, but as we've seen, the Steelers don't mind giving up some points because they know they can score points. So exactly. that's what I like. Staying on the defensive side, let's flip the coin. Uh, the Steelers' offense is dynamic. You have a lot of weapons. Now that Tino and Dongo is back in the fold, Johannes, you how, you how, I can't say his last name. Johannes, <laughs> you know who you are, Johannes, is – He's getting his feet back wet. He's becoming more of a impact on offense as well. And then they constantly sprinkle in Charles Ward, Justin Bell, Donovan Hayden, a uh, fullback Ville Linston, and then you have Seth Peters, who is the glue to all of this offense, creating plays with his feet, finding receivers, running when he has to. What about the Roosters? How do you stop this offense from having so many big plays? Obviously, they can have some success, but let's say the Roosters want to limit the scoring. They don't want the Steelers to score 40 points or 30 points in this game. What do you? What would you have the Roosters do to limit the Steelers' offense? Well, Kalle, Kalle can dial it up the way he wants to. It's like that's the, that's the luxury he has, and I think, I think – I guess people know about this, but then again, I don't think people are giving enough respect for the fact that the Roosters, they live on their defensive line. That's that's the that's the heart and soul of the whole team. It's like you know they got they got a I'm not saying eight, but they got six to seven really solid uh, defensive linemen and a full eight that they can rotate and they can they can keep so much pressure 
on the uh, other team's quarterback like no other team in the league can. can. So all of a sudden, the offense that you bring on the field is, is all right against everybody else, against the Roosters. You got somebody on, somebody's going to get through every time. It's going to be either Okotinen or it's going to be Tony or it's going to be young Edward or whoever, you know. And uh, and I, I think that's that's the big thing. It's like, you know, uh, it's like, like uh, that's, that's why they dominate. Then they got Slater. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a choker in the deck. So it's like Collis, Collis Devon is like very, very, very disciplined. But then there's, you got Curtis Slater who can make plays to num- from numbers to numbers. And he makes plays. So it's like I, I don't see them having to change anything. I just I, I, I think what, what Colin needs to maybe kind of needs to decide is like how aggressive he wants to be about it because he's, he's, a, he's a numbers guy very much. And, you know, he, he likes to he, he uh, maybe still likes to play it a little, little bit more safe than sorry. So, uh, but if it, if it's needed, you know, they got all kinds of pressures that they can bring. So it's, you know, he's got a, he's got it all in his hands. So he can pretty much decide the tempo and, you know, and, 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 and he's got a defensive machine that can, you know, stop anyone in the league. So I don't see them having any trouble with that. I mean, as Tom said, they just have so many weapons on each level of defense. I mean, the defensive line can get after you. They have, the best probably two or three linebackers combined now with um, who was the DB that came from the Vikings? Um, Oxley. Oxley. Oh, then, yeah. You add him now, you know, back into the swing of things. I know he hasn't played too much in the last two or three Maple League games. And he's been, I guess, kind of getting his feet back together or from there or just learning the scheme of things or not wanting them to get re-injured. But, I mean, they're – they're loaded up, uh, you know, top through bottom. I don't think it will be as big as the issue for them stopping it. I can see them, you know, 28 points or so maybe, but I don't think it will be too much of a problem. I think they'll be able to call what they want, do what they want, no matter where they are in the field and really get after it. Unless the Steelers want to, you know, start getting Mr. Wart out at receiver a little bit to give him more trouble. I know he's played a little more. Uh, running back towards his back half of the season. But I think if they move him out, they have a little chance to test him. But I think the Roosters will be all right, and they'll be able to call up whatever call they want, coverage, blitz, whenever and and wherever. So that's my, that's my opinion. I, I think the, uh, the Steelers, they should really, you know, like I'm sure they've done this. But, but uh, it's, it's a four-read defense. It's a split-field defense. And everybody knows how to break that. You know, everybody knows how to go against that these days. You know, you know, you know the reads. It's all textbook. Everything Kala does is textbook. So you know where the weaknesses are. You you know where the schemes are. You know this and that. But the D line is taking away the time to make use of that that knowledge. So now pass protection. You know, like if I was the Steelers, you know, they, offensively, I would try to move the pocket. I would try to you know roll out a little bit, sprint out a little bit. You know, try to create a little more time and space for the quarterback instead of being a sitting duck back there. Because, you know, that's, that's, that's not going to work against the Roosters. But I like what the Steelers do. I think the, uh, they conflict the outside linebackers really well with their offense. It's like their backfield actions, their run and pass look pretty much the same looking at it from the film. And it's, you know, it, 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 you know, it puts the outside linebackers in a bind which opens up the windows behind them that you should be able to make use of. But they got to make the field 53 yards wide and 53 yards deep against the Roosters, and now they got the, they got the speed to do it. But Tino and Johannes, they, got, they, they need to deep ball. They got, got to go at it. They, they, I think they have to come up with a, a really like an like a, like a optimistic, like, a, like, a, like really, really positive idea that you can, we can do anything we want, and they go after it. Because if they're making them small in the, in the, in the game, you know, they, they're going to get themselves killed. So mm-hmm. keep the field big and wide for the Roosters to defend and use the holes that there are, and then, you know, maybe – create some new ways to protect your quarterback so that he can get his job done. You know, that's what I would do if I was them. What are, um, I want to talk about a little bit of the matchups in the game, either position group or there's a coaching matchup. What are, what are one of the most important matchups that you're interested in seeing in this game between these two teams, like a, either a player or a position group? Yeah, I think it's probably the defensive backs against the receivers, the uh, Steelers receivers versus the Roosters defensive backs. And then if I'm them, I know they don't really man uh, Marcus Person up on a receiver, but I would think it would be him versus uh, Dongo Tino whenever they're on each other. I think that's going to be the biggest 
you know, part of the game. I know Bell is a hell of a runner and he can do his own thing back there and create his own plays as a running back. But, you know, if we, if the Steelers can't, you know, throw the ball around and really have Seth be successful, I think that's where they obviously stop. So I would say it's the Steelers receivers versus the Roosters defensive backs. If they can hold up and continue doing as they're doing on Helsinki side, I think they'll be okay. But if, you know, an injury happens or a little breakdown and the Steelers guys can start using their speed and get open, I think that will be a big, a big part of the game. So I would say the Roosters DBs versus the Steelers wide receivers. I always say this, but I, I look at the trenches. You know? Yeah. I, I keep doing that and it, I, I can't help it. It's just, you know, what I've been all, what I've always been doing. And it's like, I, I think in this game, uh, the most interesting thing to see is that how the, uh, how the uh, uh, Steelers D line, how they fare against the uh, Roosters O line. Because I think it's a huge key, and 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 the Roosters O line, even though they have they they've had a you know a tremendous season and all this and that, but you know their their O line has been uh, struggling a little bit. They've had injuries, they've had uh, shortage of players, and uh, and uh, I don't see that unit being quite up to the standard of the uh, as you know as a whole as as some of the other areas they have. So so you know there is a chance to you know to play good against the, uh, again against them. They're not totally dominating, and now the Steelers D line. They really need to step up in this game, and you know make the numbers uh, bearable for the uh, for their team to be successful in the game. So can they get pressure? You know, Yanni Lindqvist and these guys. Can they, you know, win one on ones, and uh, can they get to uh, can they get to connect uh, at all? And you know, with with that said, you know, can they create pressure? Can they take away some time? Can they uh, stop the running game without exaggerating numbers? That's where I'm going to start watching the game, and then we'll see how it goes. Yeah, those are all great matchups, guys. Let's get into the the picking the game. This is the part I want to do that will be fun for me. Uh, tell me who's going to win, why they're going to win, and then give me a score. I think it's going to be pretty simple for me. Um, I think the Roosters are taking it. Uh, winning number seven, I believe this is in a row, right? Seven? Yep, yep. seven up. Yeah, so this will be number seven in a row. Um, and I think the answer is of why they win, I think it's simple. They're, they're the better team. They're the better team, top to bottom, coaches, all players, uh, you know, every side of the ball, you know, how just how they're prepared, everything else. And I'm going to give you a score of the Roosters keep their 50 points a game up in the air. I'm going to give you 52-24 Roosters. 52-24. Okay. What about you, Tom? If Conat, if he stays in the whole game, like I, like I suppose he he could, and uh, I, I, I know his family is here and and all this, and uh, you know it, it could be it could get ugly. It's, it's if it's a if it's nice weather and uh, if Conat stays up there, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him score 60, 65 points in the game, and uh, and then the Steelers. They're probably not going to get a whole lot in the first half, but they might get something in the second half when it's over. So you know, like, like uh, I'm, I'm very much with you, coach. This, you know, like, but I, I have to, you know, give different numbers. So I'm, go, I'm going to make it worse. I'm going to say it's going to be, uh, uh, gosh, sixty-two <laughs> to fourteen. Six. Oh wow! Oh, wow, that's that's worse than mine. I thought mine was bad. Jeez, but now. Wow. No, I just said it. You know, I just said it, and now somebody, not people in Copio, they probably won't talk to me anymore. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but there's one thing that might, you know, change a lot of things. And if 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 you look outside right now, here it's 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 been raining like crazy for the last hour. I don't know. Yeah. What the for, I don't know what the forecast is for Saturday, but both these teams, you know, are passing the ball a lot. So if if it's really 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 rainy on Saturday, everything could change. Uh, oh yeah, that's very true. Yeah, I've I've only been to the last two Maple Bowls, and both times it rained. Yeah, so like that's kind of the thing of the Maple Bowl is it's probably gonna rain either before or after or during the game. But you so, remember the uh the uh not the last one but the previous one where the uh the uh, crocodiles and the roosters the ten zero game right ten zero game. So so that's what I'm saying. You know that so, could play in the, in the Steelers' favor because their run game is decent and it could be more dynamic if they have to run it because then they'll put Wart 
and Bell back there and do some things, maybe. And Justin Bell is, and Justin Bell is hard to tackle in already in general. So with the, yep. making him a little slippery, that's yep. that's going to be even tougher to do. So yep. yeah. I appreciate you two coming on the podcast today and giving your opinion and telling us a little bit about this game and these teams. They're going to be playing this Saturday. Uh, good luck to both teams, both the Steelers and the Roosters. And that's all we got on AFF today. This is my final words portion of the show. This is when I like to let my guests, you two guys, say whatever you want to, shoot your shot, uh, sell a product, whatever you want to. Use the, this platform to help yourself. Uh, Michael Madeley, you can go first, man. Final words. What you got to say? Uh, final words. Uh, it was a good first year for me in Finland. I uh, enjoyed the Maple League season. Congrats to the Steelers and Roosters making the Maple Bowl. But sorry, Kupio, it's uh, Helsinki's time to keep it going. And, uh, you know, big things for the Crocs in 2019. Everybody be ready for it. We're going back. And what about you, Coach? Well, First of all, it's like everybody should come to the game. It's uh, the the Maple Bowl is not just a game; it's an event. It's a it's an event where you see uh, people from uh, different decades. You see people you haven't seen in years, and uh, it's a it's a football community get together, and it's a well arranged, uh, 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 good show. So so it's uh, well worth uh, participating. And then uh, last thing is congratulations to both teams, obviously, and then. Uh, People in Kuopio, the players in Kuopio, if you have to happen to hear this, you know, a prediction is a prediction. I, 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 I'm very happy to for, uh, to see you guys prove me wrong. So, <laughs> so uh, good luck to everyone. All right. That's it for American Football in Finland. Appreciate everybody listening. Tune in to the next show. We'll probably do this like two more times before the Maple Bowl and have a couple more interviews. Uh, until then, see you next time. T-I-F. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is the Maple Bowl. I can't just have a show without having an interview with the coaches and players playing in the big game. So let's take a listen to head coach from the Quopio Steelers, Pekka. I can't say his last name, but Coach Pekka, tell us what you got. Coach Pekka, welcome to the AFF podcast, man. Nice to be here. I'll try to manage with the, with my English here. <laughs> You're fine, man. We take whatever language or however you can say it. I don't want to say whatever language because I don't understand Finnish yet. <laughs> yet. Uh, you guys are playing the Maple Bowl. Before we even get into the Maple Bowl, let's talk Steelers. How does it feel to be in your second consecutive championship in a row? <clears throat> yeah, well... I guess that's why you practice all winter to get, get into these games. This is my fourth year, fourth year coaching the Steelers, and this is the third bowl game we are in. So this is becoming a habit for us, thank God. <laughs> it's a good habit to have. Yeah. Going into this game, uh, we we won't ignore the obvious. You guys are the underdogs in this matchup. Mm. What does it feel like going into this this matchup, knowing that? If you win this game, you're going to be destroying a, a six-year streak. And if you lose this game, you're going to be enabling a team to have the longest streak in Finland. No pressure, but how does it feel getting ready for this type of game? I don't know why we would even bother our minds with thinking about things like that. I think it's just a huge opportunity to win. I think, I think that's there's nothing more to it and it's like... Everybody understands how rare, how it's not like you don't always get this kind of a chances to win, like finish national championships. So I don't think you need any extra motivation for anything. So you guys are going to be playing against the Roosters who have the best offense, the best defense, statistically some of the best players in the league. Mm. What exactly will you try to get accomplished against this team? What do you think that the Steelers do great that'll give you the best opportunity to beat the Roosters? Mm, well, I think going back to the last time we met the Roosters here in Kuopio, I think there was a couple of points in the game where we had a chance to take the lead. I think getting that lead would be like the biggest first step towards winning the game. I think Roosters have been trailing by three points once this year. 
and that was like after the first drive or something like that against the Butchers. So nobody knows what they'll do after that. I'm sure they'll play good football after that also. But I remember last year in the first division how, what it was like to call offensive plays when you're winning the games 90 nothing. It's it's not hard, man. <laughs> There's no pressure. There's no pressure on the caller or no, no pressure on the quarterback or no pressure on, on anybody on the field. I think that's that's something we definitely need to be able to do to put that pressure on Roosters' offense with it, with our offense. And I don't think I think it's realistic to say that we won't be like shutting them down with our de- with our defense. But we can make some stops, and that we need those stops in the right moments, and we need to put the ball in the end zone. And like we we were here in Kuopio, we got what 102 offensive snaps and 30 points. That's not good. So we need 50, 60 points with that snap count. So uh, obviously, one one way to beat the Roosters is to kind of keep their offense off the field. Will we see more of a rushing attack from you in this game, or will you still keep it kind of wide open using both the run and the pass? I think we'll let the league in in rush yards, so that's definitely going to be a part of our offense, anyways. But I don't see like the way Roosters play and the way we do, where we where, the way we play offense too. I don't think it's very like possible to just like grind it out, keep them off the field because Roosters can score fast. I think it's more important to just get the ball in the in the in the end zone any um, way possible, slow or fast. I think that's the key. Score touchdowns. That's what you gotta yeah. do, man. Yeah. Well that's all the question I was gonna ask you, Coach Peck. I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Definitely glad to have you tell us a little bit about your mindset going into this game. Wish you and the Steelers the best of luck this weekend and hope you guys have a great game and play to your full potential. Yeah, thank you. I'm sure we're going to have a fun day, fun day playing football there. There's no question. And thank you. Thank you for doing this podcast and all, all, the, all the things you do for the football in Finland. Thank you. If you like the AFF podcast, be sure to check out my website, perfectpurpose.com for more football. I have new articles published daily about football in Suomi interview articles on import players from around the globe, and I dabble in the interest topics about different aspects of American football on the international level. If you want more football, go to perfectpurpose.com and follow me as I observe football around the world. Mr.